Hi, this is Jay Calvert from Jay Calvert Special Foods, and you're watching the Weekly Firecast. Welcome to the Weekly Firecast, covering the world of hot sauce, spicy food, and barbecue. This week, Scott shows us how to make a ghost pepper pumpkin spice coffee and reviews Spice It Up Jalapeno Ketchup. So sit back, relax, and savor the burn. Savor the burn. Welcome to the Weekly Firecast. My name is Scott Roberts. This time out, we're going to be making an ultra-hot pumpkin spice coffee. I don't know about you, but I love lots and lots of coffee in the morning. It's an absolutely essential part of my day. I cannot function without it. Uh, I try different variations, different themes of coffees, uh, different flavorings added, especially the holiday, Christmas themed ones with peppermint. I just think those types of uh, flavors clash with the classic coffee flavor. But there's something about a pumpkin spice coffee that just uh, tastes so beautifully rich and just yummy on a chilly fall morning. A uh, good thing about this, it's really simple to make. Most of you have these ingredients already in your kitchen and it does not require pumpkin at all. So, let me show you how to make it. Let's start off with one cup of coffee beans. I'm not particularly picky about what type to use and neither should you. Dump them in a coffee bean or spice grinder of your choice, whatever you happen to have. And I find that instead of using the store-bought pre-ground coffees, that this recipe will turn out a lot better if you grind it yourself. Get it to a nice, fine ground consistency. Now let's add our spices. Put in two teaspoons of ground cinnamon. One teaspoon of ginger. Half a teaspoon of nutmeg and a half teaspoon of allspice. I get some ground buchiloca, otherwise known as the ghost chili pepper. You can get the stuff at many places online, just do a Google search, or you can grow and dry them yourself like I do. If you find that the buchiloca is a little too spicy for your taste, you can always substitute a ground pepper that's a little bit more mild. It could be a habanero or a cayenne, but keep in mind that the more finely that they're ground, actually the more heat and flavor from the pepper will get through. If you have a pepper that's more coarsely ground, not as much will go through when you brew it. For demonstration purposes, we'll just use a pinch, put the lid on the airtight container, and you shake it up vigorously. Get all the spices mixed up thoroughly. And using a little plastic airtight container with a lid like this is a good idea. For whatever you don't use now, you can always use for future batches of coffee. Open it up, take a look at it. They're nicely blended. The colors will look mainly like cinnamon because of the brown. And for our ground coffee beans, we'll add in two even teaspoons of our pumpkin spice mix. At this point, you can either transfer the coffee and spice mix to an airtight container or just use the grinder, but it has an airtight seal on it. And just shake the heck out of it. Make sure you turn it every which way so that smaller particles are more evenly distributed. What you have is a nice hot pumpkin spice mixed coffee that's good for several pots. Matter of fact, I want to make some for myself right now. So just go ahead and measure it out in your drip coffee machine as usual. Now I'll just wait about 10 minutes for mine. Alright, I got some poured out in a cup. Now I have to tell you, to get the full effect of the pumpkin spice flavoring, you have to have sweetener with this. And I also do not recommend a non-dairy creamer. Go ahead and use a liquid creamer or milk. I prefer skim milk. And it makes a delicious and spicy start to any fall morning. Today I'm going to be reviewing Spice It Up Jalapeno Ketchup. I have both the medium and the hot varieties with me. I have never sampled these before, so let me go ahead and crack these babies open here. Okay, first I'm going to try some medium. Looks like a normal thick, really, really dense ketchup. Yeah, this is nice and thick. Looks like a regular ketchup, like any Heinz variety that you would see. Does smell peppery, uh, but there's that base tomato aroma. So let's go ahead and uh, taste the medium first. Cheers. 
It's very sweet. Mostly like the kind of ketchup you would expect. There's a tiny bit of jalapeno flavor in there and a little bit of heat on the back end as I swallow it. Uh, and it's not too spicy at all. So that isn't too terribly bad. Now let me try the hot variety. Okay, this looks to be about the same kind of thickness. There we go. The consistency looks very similar to the medium, maybe a touch darker. You can tell it does have more of a peppery presence to it, uh, but then it still has that dom dominant tomato smell. So try the hot cheers. It's almost a different kind of sweet taste. It, it, again, just like the medium, I don't get much of the jalapeno flavor. Maybe it's really kind of blending in and camouflaging in the sweetness of the tomato. There's a tiny bit more heat on the back end. Yeah, I, I think spicy fans would love this. Uh, as a ketchup, though, it, it's pretty run-of-the-mill. Nothing really exciting or earth-shattering about this. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, try it on some food here. Okay, I have some homemade french fries here. I'm not much of a big ketchup bun burger fan at all. As a matter of fact, I don't eat a lot of ketchup. Uh, I may be prejudiced against it. Uh, to me, it's a condiment mainly for kids. Kids, especially my own, loving on just about everything. Uh, I, I find that often just a regular tomato ketchup kind of cheapens the taste of food. Uh, I still love it on french fries, though. It's my preferred condiment, my dipping sauce of choice for french fries. Uh, so this will be the best example I could probably come up with. Uh, I have, let me turn the bottle around the medium. I'll try out first. And you know, I tell you what, I'll stick it right in the bottle there. It's a very sweet tomato taste. Not very different from, uh, your normal everyday average Heinz or Hunt's ketchup. Uh, I'd say if you're looking for that type of taste, this would do it. Uh, it like I said before, the jalapeno, it really doesn't bring much to the table. It kind of gets, the flavor of that kind of gets masked and the sweetness of it. Goodness of the medium. And there's only just a tiny tinge of heat on in the aftertaste. So if you're looking for that kind of ketchup, um, I, I would, you know, something with just a little bit of spiciness to it, this might suit you. Okay, I'm going to try the hot. Some french fries here. Kind of shaking it towards the opening. You know, I'll just dip it here. Okay. Sweetness is a little different. I could taste the heat a little bit more right up front. Uh, a nice uh, kind of chili pepper taste, mostly buried, but it just kind of peeks out a little bit uh, to uh, to where you could tell this is different than regular tomato ketchup. Uh, but that regular base kind of tomato taste is still there. And, of course, there's more heat when you swallow it, more heat and the aftertaste. So all in all, these are decent ketchups. Uh, it doesn't blow me away at all. Normal ketchups don't blow me away. Uh, so I would probably have to give both of these uh, three out of five stars on overall taste. Um, it, it just There's not much more to say about it. If you like a tomato ketchup, want a little bit of heat on the end of it, then you know look into spice it up tomato ketchup. And here's the hotter version. Uh, the medium... I would say it could still appeal to most people out there if they're looking for just a little bit of spiciness. Uh, the hot, it's not too terribly hot. You know, chili heads would, would probably consider this to be a medium level. Uh, your a average, everyday, mild mouths out there, the timid, uh, would probably consider this hot, especially if they would consume a whole lot of this. So if uh, you're interested yourself in Spice Up Tomato Ketchup, just simply go to SpiceItUp.com.
And I just want to give a heartfelt thanks out to everyone who's been watching these videos, who's provided support and feedback so far. And I invite everyone to give me comments, whether it's positive or negative, about the weekly Firecast. If there's any suggestions on topic matter that you'd like to see presented, uh, feel free to contact me. And for everyone who's not already on my site watching this, feel free to jump over to my blog, scottrobertsweb.com, where I try to present coverage, uh, reviews, interviews, everything encompassing the whole wide world of hot sauce and fiery foods. I also want to invite you, if you're on the social media websites, you can follow me at twitter.com slash scottroberts if you're on Twitter. If you're on Facebook, you can befriend me at facebook.com slash scottroberts. And with that having been said, thank you very much. Good night, and remember, keep it burning.